so often, it begins the same way. A small boy with a big stick on a frozen river. This patch of ice was in Ontario. Wayne Gretzky was two years and 11 months old. But the dream is always the same. How's that feel? Good. The dream of a father for his eldest son. Did you do these skates up yourself, Brent? Yeah. With the hope that the youngest may one day follow. The dream of making a father proud. Making it so big in the National Hockey League. They'll put your number in lights. And your face on the cover of Sports Illustrated. As the first hockey player ever chosen Sportsman of the Year. The dream of playing with the legends of the game. Of being summoned to dinner at the White House. And one day, facing off against the most powerful hockey team of them all, the Russians. Vladislav Alexandrovich Tretyak. 32 years old, a Red Army major, three times an Olympic champion, ten times a world champion. A Soviet master of sport with the endurance, speed and flourish of a Cossack. He has a dream, to be a Soviet in the NHL. Imagine a line of Gretzky sweeping down on Tretyak. Here's that devastating Gretzky line. It's Glenn. Over to Keith at the side. To Wayne. A shot. Gretzky at an outstanding save. Gretzky with the rebound. Shoot. Scores! sparkling plain where ignorant armies slash by night. That was before Gretzky. He makes moves on that sparkling plain with such grace and finesse that the Russians claimed him as one of their own. If his grandfather had not emigrated from Russia, he might well be. Sports Illustrated reached into Longfellow's Hiawatha to describe his prowess. His Edmonton Oiler teammates don't quote poetry. They call him simply Gretz, or in deference to his age, the kid. Even his problems are not those of the ordinary mortal. Well, unfortunately, I'm not uh, doing the best I can in, in uh, putting the puck in the net on breakaways. Um, you know, I think that uh, you can't get discouraged about it. You can't get uh, upset with yourself. You just got to uh, realize that uh, you're going to get another opportunity for the fucking uh, breakaway. Oh, there is some resentment at the more than $1 million he banks every year. And some bad feeling over the media spotlight constantly focused on him. <laughs> but mostly they are protective of the sorcerer among them. Oh, you did it right once. I was doing a little tight. All right, let's go to the other side. While Gordie Howe holds 14 NHL records, Gretzky shattered 32 after only five years in the league. Ah! We're two for two. Two shafts, two goals. Only time or tragedy stands between Gretzky and most of the rest. kid has two dreams. One is to lead the Oilers to a series of Stanley Cups. The other is to beat the Russians every time. Edmonton, 
the Soviet goaltender, Vladislav Tretyak, emerges for practice. A photographer wants Tretyak and Wayne Gretzky in the same shot. If he gets it, it's certain front page. Tretyak is suffering jet lag and a slight fever, but Gretzky hopes he will be in the net when their teams face off in a few hours. They're friends, but Wayne has a score to settle. Coach Viktor Tikhonov has a warning for his all-stars. Don't let Gretzky and the Oilers humiliate Soviet hockey. But Tikhonov decides to rest his premier goaltender. Gambling, he can beat Gretzky and the Oilers without Kretyak. Readying for the Oilers match against the Soviets, Wayne is pessimistic. Well, we're going to do the best we can, but I, I want to... I gotta be honest, and uh, I'm playing for Edmonton Oilers, and I'm gonna do my best to contribute. They're saying that they're coming over with a select team of only 15 or 16 national team members. Um, when you're picking from 280 million people, or, or however many people live in the Soviet Union, uh, and with the talent they have, it's pretty tough for a club team to uh, to beat them. Predicts privately the Oilers may lose by as many as five goals. Edmonton is a young, rambunctious squad whose fluid style of attack owes much to the Russians. But they are a club team up against Soviet all stars. Soviets are suffering jet lag, but Edmonton is still the underdog, and they come out flying. Just as there's a perfect spot on a tennis racket to hit the ball, so there is a sweet spot in time. The moment precisely right for the act. And in that split second, he goes to exactly the right spot. He controls the pace, mesmerizing the opposition with split-second pauses at the top of his shot. Gretzky administers the coup de grace, and the Oilers win 4-3. Gretzky says the absence of Tretyak from the Soviet goal undoubtedly made the difference. Returning the compliment, Tretyak says there is one thing which makes Gretzky stand out from most NHLers. His head, his brains. In the Soviet Union, all specialists, and myself personally, all the guys think that he's a European-style hockey player. What does that mean? It means he's not a crude, rough player. He's a thinking type of player.
In 1962, when Gretzky was but one, a scrawny 10-year-old from a Moscow suburb arrived for a tryout at the Central Red Army Sports Club. Vladislav Petjak's father was Air Force, but it was his mother who had the right connections. She taught here in the phys ed program, so he was among the thousand who try out every year. Only 70 are selected. Young Tretjak was a forward who could skate like the wind, so they kept him. He had two dreams. The first was to wear on his chest the red star of the Soviet national team. But his first team had too many players and not enough sweaters. They also had no goaltender. Give me a sweater, said Tretjak, and I'll be the goaltender. In the beginning, he was so scared, he closed his eyes when the shooting began. But by the age of 15, he was backup goaltender for the Red Army. Two years later, he was number one. His second dream was to play the Canadian professionals and beat them. The international hockey match between Team Canada and the Soviet Union is declared open. The opportunity came in 1972. The profits were unanimous. The Canadian professionals were going to blow the Soviets into Hudson Bay. It was the Canadians who were shocked. Losing three games, fighting back to win three, and playing one to a tie. Park is trying to come out on the left side. A long pass to Phil Esposito going in. As he had throughout the series, the 20-year-old Tretjak played brilliantly. 90% of the country tuned in including a former prime minister. Oh, that was a back shot. Now, now, now! Five oh two. Left in the game. A five all tie. One more goal would win it. That seemed an impossible dream. By Petjak. Bernoye has it on that wing. Here's a shot. Henderson made a wild stab for it fell. Here's another shot. Right by the score! Jack still has nightmares of the climactic moment. Twice the shot came, and twice he made the save. But his defenseman had been drawn away. In 1972, Canada won the battle. But the Soviets have since won the war. Kretjak's substantial collection of pins and medals boasts of an almost unrelenting Soviet victory in international play. The 1980 Olympics were a dramatic exception. Tretjak punishes himself after defeat. Defeat, says Tretjak, makes him physically ill. He says a goalie has only one commandment, to stop the puck. Because a play unfolds in the wink of an eye, he says a goalie has no time to react. The goalie must see the play as if in slow motion, and know where the puck is going ahead of time. He went on to become the most valuable player as the Soviets won the next world championship. His fame has even spread to Las Vegas, where once a year, the victors, Oscars of the sports world, are distributed at a glittering gala. And now, the nominees for the Hockey Player of the Year. Vladislav Tretiak, the veteran of three Olympics, 1972, 76, and 80, could well be the finest goalie in the world. From Russia, goalie Vladislav Tretiak.
Number 99, Wayne Gretzky. You know, they said there would never be a hockey player who could score more than 200 points in a single NHL season, but there is now. Gretzky scored 92 goals, had 120 assists for an incredible 212 points. How about that? Just 21 years old from the Edmonton Oilers, the great Gretzky. Okay, Mick. <laughs> the winner is Wayne Gretzky. No way. Now I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> this is the first time, I think, in the history of the 16 year history of the Victor Awards that a nominee has gotten a completely unanimous decision. That means every ballot that was returned had your name on it as first choice. That's an outstanding achievement. <laughs> an outstanding achievement. Congratulations. Wayne and girlfriend Vicki Moss leave like a couple after the senior prom. But the presence of Mr. 20%, his agent, Gus Badali, signals that the Victor Award evening is more than just a good time. It's part of the selling of Wayne Gretzky, exposure in a prime American market. <laughs> He is one of the few Canadian athletes ever to reach stardom in U.S. TV commercials. Wayne is challenging the preeminence of commercial superstars like baseball's Reggie Jackson, and he's only getting started. The only thing I know is Mattel knows what it's doing. Do you want to play hockey? Now a little more to the right. That'll work. That'll work. Look out, here comes something special. Super action, great big taste. Cheer them as they come your way. For Wayne Gretzky, it began on cold winter nights on a rink in the backyard of his Brantford, Ontario home. Hours spent practicing after school paid off. And now, two of the next wave of Gretzky's, Wayne's brothers, 11-year-old Brent and 13-year-old Glenn, prowl the same patch of ice. Home from his job as a telex repairman is Wayne's first and best coach. What you have to do is get your elbow out and up. His father, Walter. Behind your own stick. It's all my dad, says Wayne. I know exactly um, who was on the ice against me all the time. I scored one goal when I was my first year. I was six years old. And ever since that goal, didn't come my father. Said, you remember what happened in the school? Where this guy was and what that guy was doing? He taught me that. Should hardly hear a sound. Shouldn't even. That's it. But not too far back, or you end up losing it. That's it. Okay, once again, Brett. His sons stand apart from a system which Just glorifies fighting. Apart from a system where stick handling, stick. accurate passing, and That's marksmanship are becoming lost arts. He just nice, quick, little flick of the wrist like that. Walter, the amateur photographer, captured two-year-old Wayne's first skate. By three, he was stick handling on the melting ice of an indoor arena. Wayne's weighing number 16 there. At 10, standing four foot four and weighing only 70 pounds, he played against 14-year-olds and finished the season with an incredible 378 goals. Team cut out in front. In this eight-game tournament, he scored 50 goals, including seven in the final game. Those years of practice helped make him swift, but testing shows he was born with a superb reaction time. Corners are where many hockey careers are ended. Yet Gretzky throws an almost imperceptible deep and is out before an opponent can set him up. Corners can frighten people, especially at a young age. Uh, 
Uh, if you go in there and you get uh, don't know how to go in the proper way and you get hit a few times, uh, then you don't want to go in there anymore. And I think that right from the beginning that coaches should teach kids the uh, proper way of going in the corners. And uh, you know, I've been playing this game for a long time, and uh, I've never been hurt in the corners ever before. Great athletes possess hallmarks which distinguish their play. The area behind the net is Gretzky's back alley. And whether in a game or practicing with Oiler goalie Grant Fuhr, he wants perfect ice. Most players attack from the front, not Gretzky. He sits in the alley and waits. If they come after him, he throws out a perfect pass to an open teammate. If they wait, then out he bursts. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Basically, I started going behind the net and, and playing behind the net because of my size. Um, played junior B hockey when I was 14 and not that big of a hockey player. And staying in front of the net, I used to get knocked over an awful lot. So by using the net as a decoy and trying to stay away from the defenseman, I found that coming behind the net seemed to keep me uh, out of the road of other defensemen and getting knocked over. <laughs> You're lucky. That was it. When I do it, I know what I'm doing. I can't teach. I, I couldn't teach a person um, the things that, I, that I've tried to do and the things that I've learned to do. Um, my father, who has taught me all those things since I was yay high, he can teach it. He's taught my other three brothers. Get it in front of you, Brent. See how it slides off the end? You don't get it in front. You know, I know that uh, um, I'm fortunate. And I'm, I'm very, uh, very lucky to to have that uh, God-given, uh, God-given talent. But like I said, you know, it has, it has to progress at anything you do. He progressed and was much honored. But still, he dreamed of taking on the Soviets. Not wearing an oiler uniform, but T Canada's red maple leaf. The Canada Cup tournament. On this night, his dream came true. showdown is the Montreal Forum, the Vatican of the hockey world, home of the Montreal Canadiens, whose Stanley Cup victory pennants are revered even by the Red Army. This man is known from Victoria to Vladivostok, Maurice the Rocket Richard. The Canadian star who filled arenas as Gretzky does now, and whose phenomenal 50 goals in 50 games stood for 37 years until Gretzky finally broke it. Soviet coach Tikhonov decides to keep Tretjak in reserve for the tournament championship. For this match, he chooses goaltender Vladimir Mishkin. his premier defenseman, Vashislav Fetisov, to try and slow Gretzky down as it's done in the NHL. But on this night, Gretzky is unbound. The Soviets remark contemptuously that most Canadian professionals will shoot and not pass in this situation. 
Coach Bowman wishes Gretzky had shot. Tretiak says Gretzky's unpredictability in situations like that makes him more dangerous. The Soviets trained secretly to thwart Gretzky in his staging ground, the alley behind the net. Gretzky breaks away, scores a goal, and sets up two others, including the game winner. Team Canada wins the battle, 7-3. But in the championship game, they now face Tretiak, who crosses himself like an old Montreal Canadian. And on this night, God sides with the Russians. Time and time again, Team Canada is stopped by the magnificent Major. Tretiak at his best. In the final minute of play now, and it's loose in front. The shot right on. Did he score? By Dennis no. Potvin. He usually scores in the NHL on shots like that. Not so. Great Jack again. Gretzky moving indeed. Gretzky and a weak pass out in front. In this game, even Gretzky gives the puck away. Grutov and Lafleur back away on it. They score. Grutov out in front of the shot. They score. Sports off two on one down over the line. The shot he scores, and it's eight to one. Well, there's the outstanding player for the Soviets, and we mentioned him near the end of the game. I thought the key performance in the game was that first period that Tretiak put in. Now it's Tretiak's turn to gather the laurel. The Soviets take home the Canada Cup. The Gretzkys decide to follow, accepting an invitation from the Soviet Ice Hockey Federation to investigate the inner workings of the Red Army system. Wayne is curious how a Red Army superstar lives and works. Tretiak and his family give up a large part of their vacation to play host to the Gretzky family. Wayne carries a letter from Prime Minister Trudeau, naming him a hockey ambassador. How are you? My father, Walter? For Walter, it's also a voyage to his father's native land. They come to a Moscow warmed by June sunshine and are installed in the 5,000 room Hotel Russia in a prime location across from the Kremlin and Red Square. Hockey in North America is run by the owners in conjunction with Alan Eagleson and the Players Association. Here, it's the Red Army and the Communist Party. Because during the last war, 20 million of the Soviet people uh, died uh, on the battle. Tretjak is at once a hockey player and an army officer. Somebody uh, just died during this battle. To break the ice, Vlad and Titania invite the Gretzky boys for dinner. <laughs> Tanya was nervous cooking a meal for North American boys. How are they going to like Russian sausage, chicken Kiev, caviar, and vodka? Bread and salt the traditional Russian greeting for honored guests. Mm. 
Добро пожаловать в мой дом. Очень рад, что вы приехал ко мне канадский, канадский друг. И по русскому обычаю, самого дорогого, дорогого гостя, мы встречаем хлеб с солью. Почему? Потому что дороже хлеба, наверное, нет. Вкусно? Brent, Glenn, and Keith have the same respect for Tretiak as others have for their brother. Finished. Uh, Seventy-six. Seventy-six. Uh, Seventy-six. Uh, Seventy-six. Uh, Seventy-six. 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 Seventy
The morning after, at the Central Red Army Sports School, a nationwide shortage of sticks and skates hampers the mass of Soviet kids playing the game, as does a chronic shortage of indoor hockey arenas. It's estimated that while the Soviets have built perhaps 75 indoor hockey arenas, Canada alone boasts at least 2,200. When a fuss was made about Soviet drills prior to the 1972 series, Wayne wondered why. He observed that Walter had been teaching those drills all his life. But where the Soviets still leave North American hockey behind is their emphasis on dry land training with sets of exercises for sculpting muscles needed on the ice. Even the Gretzky boys are hard put to keep up with Soviet boys the same age. Something as basic as a somersault gives Brent trouble and brings a helping hand from Wayne. What is mastered in the gym is then applied on the ice, where knowing how to fall can save serious injury. What the Soviets learned from the 72 series was that to keep up with the North Americans, you needed drill to teach toughness and quick thinking under pressure. Hours are spent on drills which teach stick handling in a crowd, passing, pass receiving, and shooting. Only at 10 does regular competition begin. Progress has been made in North America, but throwing a six-year-old into a game where he learns by the seat of his pants is still too often the approach. who run Soviet hockey were skeptical when it was suggested Walter Gretzky give a hockey clinic at the Red Army School. What could a backyard coach with no NHL experience teach them? Okay, this time we're going to do a skating drill. We're going to move on command of the stick. Okay, let's go. Right. Over. Down. Up. Forward! Okay. No cheating sideways. Come on, Glenn, you're holding everybody up. In hockey, you must use every means at your disposal. be practicing today is going into the corner it's a very important part of the game so whenever you see the puck go into the corner you always go in there as fast as you can
As it ended, one Soviet coach called Walter Gretzky North America's secret weapon. You'll drop your shoulder one way and come off the other. He says the Soviets bank on opponents from across the Atlantic having scant training in these hills. The kind polished on a backyard rink in Brantford. Tretjak marvels at Wayne's strategic wizardry. Gretzky played in loops from behind the net. We could not figure out who was supposed to pick him up. I think it's a very new thing in Canadian hockey. They scored many times during the Canada Cup. It was very tough for our guys. For a goalkeeper, when he cannot see the net, this technique makes it very complicated. That's why, training for the Canada Cup, many teams practice to stop it. And now, in our national championship, we ourselves are doing what he does. Tretjak agreed to pass back some lore of his own, and for the first time, show the drills that have made him the best goaltender in hockey. I'd rather go in the corners. As a boy, he watched a Cossack dance troupe and thought the exercise perfect for a goaltender. As he gets old, they're growing desperate to replace him. Stretjak questioned Wayne closely about the perks and pay of an NHL player. Petyak secretly was delighted when he was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. But persuading the Soviets to let him go, even for a while, has been more difficult than arms negotiations.
Perhaps a true showdown between Soviet and North American hockey is impossible. While the North American system cranks out players for 21 professional teams, the big red machine forges one army on ice to carry the banner for the Soviet way of life. Intriguing to speculate, what would have happened if Gretzky's grandfather had stayed in the Soviet Union? There's a good chance that living in a remote part if they did, there would have been no skates, no stick, and without political connections, perhaps no chance. But Walter would probably have found a way. Gretzky, Glenn getting set over to Keith. A pass to the other side to Wade. A shot, a marvelous save by Presciak. The rebound. Wayne Gretzky shoots, scores! 